Today we will learn how to use a laboratory vernier caliper. This here is a label diagram of what a vernier caliper looks like. A vernier caliper has two sets of jaws. The upper ones I call internal while the lower ones I call external jaws. Each has its own use depending on the type of object that we have to measure. The right jaw is movable. The object that we have to measure, such as the blue ball here, we put it between the two jaws and adjust them until the object fits perfectly between the two jaws. Then we tighten the screw above so that the jaws remain in place and do not move. As you can also see, the vernier caliper has two sets of scales. The main scale on the above side is the one which is fixed and stretches throughout the instrument whereas the vernier scale is movable and only has 10 divisions. The vernier scale is connected to the movable jaw and is also used in taking the reading. The vernier caliper also has a depth rod which as the name suggests is obviously used to measure the depth, the depth of, an, of, of the object. Next up we will learn how to actually read a vernier caliper and take measurements. Here is a zoomed in simplified diagram of a vernier caliper which will help us focus solely on the scales. Like we learned earlier, there are two sets of scales. The one on the top is the main scale, whereas the one on the bottom which has 10 divisions is called the vernier or the movable scale. On the right here is written the unit of the vernier caliper which here is centimeters. So this, so this means that the every number on the, vernier, on the, on the main scale represents one centimeter. So this here, this six here, for example, means six centimeters, seven means seven centimeters, and so on. Now, as there are 10 divisions between six and seven, each of these divisions represent 0 0.1 centimeter. So this is 6.1, this is 6.2, 6.3, and so on. Now, to take the main scale reading, what we have to do is, we have to first see where the zero is of the very near scale. So as you can see, the zero is in this case here. Let me just write that with a pen here so that it makes us more prominent. So the zero is here of the vernier scale. Now our main scale reading is the one that is just behind the zero of the vernier scale. What that means is that we now have to look at the main scale and we have to see which reading is just behind the zero of this scale. So we can see that this division here is the one that is closest to the zero and also behind it. We do not have to consider the one ahead of it. We always look to the one that is just behind it. So this here is our main scale reading. Now we can count to see which reading that is. 6.1, this, this 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4. .6 so this must be our 6.5. So our main scale reading in this case, in this scenario, is 6.5 centimeters. Now, we, now we need to see, now we need to take the vernier scale reading. Now I want you to notice how this, let me just on the laser pointer again. I want you to notice, notice how this zero of the vernier scale is actually between these two divisions. It does not coincide with either of these divisions, right? Now look at the fifth division on the vernier scale, which is this one. Notice how it makes a perfect line with the vernier, with the main scale. This is the, the way we take the readings of the vernier scale. Let me just point. Let me just make that line out again, so it makes it easy, easier for us to see again. Look at how this is a perfect straight line that goes through both the main scale as well as the vernier scale. So the reading that aligns perfectly with the main scale is a vernier, very vernier, vernier scale reading. We have to see which division of the vernier scale forms one straight line with the main scale. In this case, it was the fifth. You see, I'm going to on the laser pointer again. So this is the first division of the one. Now we don't have to consider the main scale. We have already taken the main scale reading. So now we will read the vernier scale. So this is the first division. This is the second. This is the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So our vernier scale reading in this case is five. But we have to do something more here. So technically, we have taken the we have taken both readings, right? Our main scale reading was 6.5 cm, while our vernier scale reading is 5. However, as this vernier caliper is in centimeters, what we do now is that we put a, zero point, a point and a zero 
behind the vernier scale reading. What that means here is that you see our vernier scale reading is 5. So what we are going to do is before that 5, we are going to put a point and then another 0. So our vernier scale reading becomes 0 0.05. We had 5. We first put a decimal mark before it and then also another added a 0. So our vernier scale reading actually becomes 0 0.05. Now we have got the actual vernier scale reading and we have got the main scale reading. What we simply have to do now is that we are going to add the two together. So the actual measurement of this uh, that this vernier caliper shows is 6.5 cm plus 0 0.05 cm. So our answer becomes 6.55 cm and that is indeed the value that the vernier caliper shows. Notice that if this vernier caliper was actually in millimeters instead of centimeters, we would not have put a zero behind, the, we would only have put a decimal mark, we would not have put another zero. So in that case, this 5 would have just been 0 0.5. But as this vernier caliper is in centimeters, we added not only a zero, we not, not only a decimal point, but also a zero and made it 0 0.05. This agrees with our with some with something that we learned in the previous video, that is that the least count of a vernier caliper is 0 0.01 centimeters. As you can see, 6.55. So it's giving us the answer correct to 0 0.01 centimeters. You can also think of it this way: the vernier caliper reading in a centimeter vernier caliper gives us the third digit of the vernier caliper, even though it's up to the point, obviously but it is the third number and that is given by the vernier, vernier scale only if the vernier caliper is in centimeters. Some vernier calipers are in millimeters and some are in centimeters so it depends on the instrument that we are going to use. Next we will talk about the zero error. The zero error occurs when the zeros of the vernier scale and the main scale do not align when the jaws are closed. By the way, when we say that the jaws are closed, it means that there is no object between the two jaws and hence no gap between them. First, let's look at how a vernier caliper that does not have a zero error looks like when it is closed. This diagram shows a vernier caliper that does not have a zero error and the jaws are closed. That is, there is no gap between the two jaws. Can you find out the reading this vernier caliper shows? As we can see, the two zeros of both the scale align perfectly. As you can see, the two zeros make a straight line. So the reading here is actually 0, 0.00 centimeter, which is correct because like I said, there is no gap between the jaws. So obviously the length is zero, is zero. However, sometimes due to a technical fault, the two zeros do not align even when the jaws are closed. In cases like these, we say that the vernier caliper has zero error. Look at this diagram now. Do the zeros make a straight line? Now that we have ascertained that the two zeros do not make a straight line, we need to find out what the zero error actually is. And the way we do that is very similar to the way we take the reading of a vernier scale. Remember, we used to look at the, to, at the division that made a perfect straight line with the main scale, right? So can you find that division in this diagram? As we can see, the sixth division forms one straight line. So this is, uh, the, this is the answer of our zero error. Again, we, we, we would count from the vernier scale. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So our vernier scale reading is, is six. Now, like I, like, like I said, when, there's, when the vernier caliper is in centimeters, what we do is we put a decimal point and then a zero before our vernier scale reading. So this six becomes 0 0.06. Now, also there's another point here. Not only do we say 0 0.06, we have to say a positive 0 0.06 for reasons that we would find out later. Now, this 0 0.06 means that every reading this vernier caliper takes is 0 0.06 higher than the actual value. That is, if we have to measure 0, it is giving 0 0.06. If we are to measure 1, it would give us 1.06. So if our, if our value that we measure 
is 9.58, for example, our actual value becomes 9.58 minus 0 0.06, that is 9.52 centimeters. This obviously is just an example. But what we are doing is that whatever value we obtain in a vernier caliper that has zero error, we have to subtract the positive zero error from it. Oh, and by the way, what is the difference between the positive and the negative zero error? Because this is very crucial. Well, let's look at the diagram again. See how the zero of the main scale comes before the zero of the vernier scale. As you can see, the zero is this zero is first and this zero is after that. So when the main scale zero comes first, as in this diagram, we say that the zero error is positive and then we subtract it later on. But if in case a ver if if in case the zero of the vernier caliper had come first and then the main and then this uh, the main scale zero would have come that in that case our zero error would be negative and like we did here we subtracted in that case if our zero error was negative we would have added the zero error to whatever value we obtained to get the actual value so again a revision a positive zero error is subtracted from the reading as we did here whereas a negative zero error is added to the reading that's all for this video Subscribe and like our channel for more physics and maths related content and for more O-Levels content in general. Thank you very much.